encourage you to complete this teapot before you leave for spring break so you can just let it be drying out in your locker and you're ready for green check checking when we come back. Okay? Okay. Anybody still need a handout? Zeke, did you get one? There's some coming. Oh, there's some coming? Okay. Okay. So the thing with the teapot is <clears throat> it's one of the most challenging projects in that there's a lot of different parts to this teapot. Um, the, the different parts are the body of the teapot, the lid of the teapot, the knob of the teapot, the spout, and the foot, right? So there's all these different components that you have to make, some of them separately, and then you have to figure out, out a way to put them all together at the end, right? So that's the challenge in this project because you have to let them all be made and then get to leather hard before you put them together. So looking right at the top there, let's just review the requirements of this assignment. It says that the body of the teapot must be made using a press mold. Now this here is a press mold. Has anybody seen where these are in the room? Anybody notice these? That's right. They're over there and they're underneath your toolkits. Okay. There's lots of different sizes and shapes of press molds, but they're just these bisque ware bowls that you're going to be using. And that's to create the main compartment or the part that holds tea of the teapot, the body. Um, you need to demonstrate the skill of pulling a handle, which I'm going to show you guys today how to pull a handle. You also need to make sure that you have a foot, a lid, a spout, a knob on the top, and this handle. So there's all these components that must be a part of it. And last but not least, no words or symbols can be used. Now, the teapot is one of the forms that potters like to create over and over again because as you can see by my examples on the table, there are thousands of different ways you can make teapots, right? Now you guys, your only limitation is that you have to make the body using the press mold. And the press molds are round or spherical. However, there's a couple different shapes you can have. Down here, Sergio, can you pass me that one right in front of you? This person created the body of the press mold and then they used their, what they knew from previous skills, to build coils to make this neck to change the shape a little bit. This person here made the press mold three times so that they could have this snowman shape. You can use multiples if you want to. This person over here took it the other direction and they, their lid is kind of inside the pot right now, but you can see they only used half a press mold to create this shape. And then they used what they knew previously with slabs, and they created a slab base. So while you won't be able to make a geometric shape like a triangle, a pyramid, or a square, or something like that, there are options for you guys in terms of which press mold you choose and how you choose to use them. Okay, so we're going to spend a lot more time talking about that tomorrow. For today, I need to give you the basics so that you can see how the whole thing is put together so that when you get to tomorrow, you know what you're doing. All right, um, no words or symbols. I think I said that one already. So that covers all your requirements. All right, so we're in the, the room or the mold store. We said they're under the toolkits. Do you need me to move this stuff, Sarah? Um, Want me yeah. to move it out of the way so you can set the camera down? Here. How's that? Better? Okay. Um, how are you going to fill the press molds? The best way to fill the press mold quickly is to roll a coil. Now, this is going to be a different kind of coil rolling than you saw when we did the coil pot because those coils were really, really perfect. Your objective with these kinds of coils are not necessarily perfection, but to get them in quickly. Because you want to fill the entire mold in a, in a class period, and hopefully you can do two whole molds in a class period. So my coil does not have to be 100% perfect, but I want the clay to stay nice and soft so that when I go to loot it together on the inside here, it won't re-crack as it dries, okay? So I'm just gonna start by rolling this kind of like snail shape thing here, and then I'm gonna set it in the bottom of the mold. If my coil breaks, it's no big deal. So I'm setting it in the bottom of the mold like this to get started. And then all I'm gonna do is fill up the rest of the mold with coils. Now I don't want a double layer, so if that coil broke off like I said, the next layer that I make, 
I'm just going to start my coil at the spot where that one broke off and just keep going. Okay, so I don't want a double thickness, but I do want, did you guys see that? Um, I do want to get this mold filled and I want it filled quickly, which brings us to the answer blank number two. How, in, how should your molds be stored overnight? They need to be put back on the shelf under the toolkits. You may not put the mold in your locker. You do not want to leave the clay in the mold overnight. If you leave the clay in the mold overnight, let's talk about what will happen. All right, so this mold is made out of clay. I just threw these bowls on the wheel and I bisque fired them. Based on what you guys learned with the glazing, what do you know about bisqueware? It's, it, it's porous, right? So it sucks that moisture out. So knowing that, what do you think will happen to this if I leave the clay in here overnight? It's going to dry the whole thing out, right? So you, you want to get this part made in class period and get it out of there and put the mold back over there. All right, so you can see I got the mold filled. It's not necessarily beautiful, but that's okay because I'm going to loot it all together. So more than perfect and beautiful, what's important is that it's really, really soft and that I get it in there quickly. So now that I've got it in there, I'm going to use my finger and I'm going to get it all looted together. Okay, so let's say then this pro bring, poses a problem to you guys because if you're trying to make two press molds and put them together, you need to have the exact same press mold the second time because if you have one that's this size and one that's this size, they may not fit together right. So you want to use the same press mold for both sides, probably, right? How are you going to find that same press mold? If you put it back over there, how are you going to find it again the next day if you need it or if your piece dries out and you need to make another one? What's that? I take the one you made. That's a good idea. You could take the one you already made and see if it fits back in. But we also know that it's going to shrink as it dries, right? So it might fit a little looser than you would think. I do not. In fact, what I'm, I, some of them have numbers on the bottom because that's a smart idea and I did think of that. So some of them I actually do have numbers. You could find an identifying mark, but you also are allowed to write your name on them. So pen or pencil, I don't care. It'll wash off later. I'm going to write my name on here so I know I can find it again. I'm going to write Mrs. Felix. Then I can find it very easily. All right. Um, some of them do have some numbers or identifying marks, but you're perfectly welcome to write your name on there. Um, you will find when you come back the next day, somebody else's name on the, is on there too from a different class period, and that's fine. You just have to share with that person. Okay, so before I continue doing what I'm doing, I want to tell you what I'm doing. Um, when I looted this, and I got it all blended together on the inside, and it was pretty easy to do because it was nice soft clay, I made it so the, the clay would spill up out over the top of the mold. And that's what I want. Because when I cut this off, I'm going to take my pin tool, and I'm going to hold it at a 90-degree um, angle from the side of the, the mold here, so that when I cut it off, I get this really nice, flat lip that's about a quarter of an inch thick. Quarter of an inch is pretty important. You don't want this to be thicker, otherwise, you have, number one, your clay could be so thick it could explode, and number two, if it's really thick, it's not going to hold much tea, right? So you want to get about a quarter of an inch in terms of thickness there. And why, Dee Dee, why do you think I need to have that edge on there? So I can attach it to the other part. So when I get to the point where I've got my pieces and they are leather hard, I need to have an area that I can score and slip so that when I do my score, slip, and scoochie, scoochie, they'll actually stick together. What you do not want to do is pinch this edge really, really thin because if you pinch it really thin, when you go to score and slip, there's, there's nothing there. You'll create a weak spot around the middle. So you want to get that clay spilling up over the top of the mold and chop it off like that. Okay, now you can probably be a little bit neater with your looting than I am. I'm going quickly because i got a lot of parts to make to show you guys. So you can smooth this out a little bit more before you pop it out of the mold. You could use, you know, get in there with your fingers or your sponge or whatever and make it nice and smooth on the inside. And then we're going to release it from the mold. 
here's how you do it. You're going to hold it like this with your hand underneath so it doesn't fall out and hit the table and go splat. And then you're going to take this hand and you use a fleshy part, not your knuckles because that would hurt, the fleshy part of your hand and you're just going to start knocking it. Now because this is, you heard it pop, because this is um, already bisquare, you can see it's sucking up the moisture, it releases easily, right? So if you've used this a couple times and it starts getting wet, it may not release easily. You might be like, oh, Mrs. Fields, it's not coming out. And you guys won't have that problem as much as second period because second period has to come in and use them after you guys did. So their molds will already be a little bit wet. So they'll have a little bit more trouble. What you should do if it does not release from your mold is just set it to the side and let it dry for a few more minutes and then try again. <clears throat> it will start absorbing the water. It will pop out. Do not take my molds and start banging them against the table to release it because you will break the mold and potentially cut yourself, right? So it won't help. So just set it to the side, give it a few minutes, make a spout, make a handle, make something else, and then come back to it, okay? Now, on the outside here, this part gets a little bit trickier. I want to get rid of my coils. Most of you guys are going to want to get rid of those coil marks. So what I use is this serrated rib, and I just carefully loot the outside. And what I mean by carefully is I'm not going to squish it. However, let's say I get a little distracted and I'm talking to my friends and I'm like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, no. <laughs> you could A, use your creative mind and create a turtle teapot. Or, or we can fix it. So after I get it looted, if I damage the shape a little bit, and I, this is extreme damage. I, I like to be a little extreme in my demos. Hopefully you guys won't be this careless with your form. But if you damage the shape and it's not perfect, the best way to fix it is after you get it smoothed out is to put it back in that mold and then just kind of push it back out and pop it back out, and then you can fix it. Okay, so we can smooth this out, you know, all these rough spots when it's leather hard, but at least now we got it pretty well looted, and you got to watch it because that spiral at the bottom there really likes to re-crack, and then your teapot doesn't hold tea. So I really would, especially in that bottom spot right there, loot extra deep to try to get that little spiral coil well melded because I've seen it lots of times where it comes apart again. But if you damage it, like I said, always you can pop it back in that mold and fix the shape. Okay, so fast forward next day. I have my two molds, and they're leather hard now. So now I'm ready to score slip and scoochie scoochie. Like I said, you want them to be the same mold so they fit together nicely, and thus for some reason you're going for an effect where they don't match up, which some people do. Um, but you want them to be the same size so that they'll fit together. So I am going to score and slip this. And once again, my scoring and slipping and scoochie scoochieing will not be maybe the best it could be, but it'll hold together for this demo. All right, so I score and slip the edge here. And then when I scoochie scoochie this, I, all I'm going to do is twist it back and forth. And of course, say scoochie scoochie. I would not do this without saying scoochie scoochie. You know that. You want to help me out this morning? <laughs> Come on, guys. You ready? Monday morning after a time change. Nothing like doing the scoochie oh, scoochie yeah, to no, wake no, you no, up. No, All right. <laughs> Good. I like to. I'm glad I could help you make it worse this morning. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Scoochie scoochie scoochie. Come on. So bad. Scoochie scoochie. I didn't get you this time. I was laughing. Oh, okay. <laughs> scoochie, scoochie. So do you guys see, I could, like, twisting it back and forth, and it reaches that point where it doesn't want to twist anymore. That's how I know I got a good joint there. Now I can just kind of clean up my seam here. I know. You ought to put a hole in there. Good. Why do I have to, and there will be a hole, but why do I have to put a hole in there? You just created a giant air pocket. Because I just created a giant air pocket. Now, there will be holes in here because I'm going to attach a spout and a lid and all that stuff. So, yes, there will be holes in there. What are you doing? I'm doing... I'm using my wood tool, 
and I'm just paddling it a little bit mm -hmm. to get rid of that seam and make it look well blended. But it has too. No, it really doesn't actually. <laughs> Scientifically proven. You're a scientist? I, you were I am. Teacher. I'm many things. Okay, so this is a teapot, right? It's an egg. So let's talk about form and function and mostly function. So what do you think maybe the best thing for me to create next would be? Make a flat bottom. A flat bottom, a foot, right? Yeah. So when you make a foot, I want you to attach a foot. And yes, this, this student was very clever. And what they decided to do was actually make a foot for the foot, which I love. Um, I'm glad, I don't know why he left this one with me, but it's, it's pretty cool. So that being said, and I'm glad you brought this to my attention, because there's many different ways you can make a foot. I don't have a requirement of how you make a foot, but you do have to attach a foot. This student said, I'm going to make a foot, which means I'm going to sculpt a foot, and they hollowed it out so it wasn't too thick, so they have this recessed foot, right? Um, this student here decided that they would attach four little pieces of clay to make the foot. This person here just did a coil and they attached it so it would have a foot. And then this person here made a coil foot but then they kind of disguised it with some seashells and uh, stuff around it so that it would be more decorative. Okay, so how you make your foot doesn't matter but it has to have a foot. For this demonstration, I just do the standard coil one. But the thing I want to point out for, to you guys is that if you do a foot, it is really important that all of your pieces become leather hard before attaching. And here's why. Do I have my fishy teapot? I think I lost my fishy teapot. Yeah, I did. Here's why. If I attach this foot today, and I'm just going to take a coil, you know, like this. No, I do a different one, and I, the, the foot got really smashed. So when I put this on here, I can play with it, because I picked a mold that was kind of like tall, and so I can have like a very vertical teapot, I could have a horizontal teapot, or I could have, I could, yeah, I could, I could have a diagonal teapot with a little bit of attitude, right? So you can play with how you want to put the, the foot on, but what is really important is that you wait until the foot is leather hard and then you score slip and scoochie scoochie. Here's why. If you attach it now and then you're working on the rest of the pot, oh yeah, this is, I'm really into my pot. This is great. Oops. Right? So you can smash it as you're working on it. So make the coil, let it dry to leather hard, and this one here I just put two coils together, and then I'm going to scoochy scoochy it. So to attach this foot, I'm going to decide where I want it to go, and then I'm going to take my pin tool. I wanted it to be tall. Why? Because I like tall things, maybe because I'm short, I'm overcompensating for my weakness, I do not know. But I trace the inside and outside roughly. It's going to be good. Just wait for it. It's going to be good, guys. Don't wait. Okay, so I just am going to score and slip. And again, I told you I'm not scoring and slipping the best I possibly can for the demo. I'm going to score and slip that area. I'm slipping. All right, I would really like the same help I got last time with the scoochie scoochie because that was awesome. But better than what I just did. Okay, you guys are going to help me? Ready? Scoochie, 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 scoochie. Nice. That foot is sticking for sure. And now I'm just going to kind of press it down. Really make it sure it's good and stuck on there. And then I can clean up all my score and slip marks. There we go. All right. So now I still have my spout, my handle, my lid, and my knob to make. So let's make the lid next. And the lid, all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out like if you guys have ever made a jack-o'-lantern. Um, and you have to, you know, carve the pumpkin face out and you got to cut the top on. The idea is when you cut that pumpkin, um, you want to cut it at a 45 degree angle so the lid doesn't fall in. So we're going to do the same thing here. Now, another thing to keep in mind, I'm going to put my lid here. And you can make it any shape you want. It could be a square shape, circle shape. You can make it fit in with your design. I will warn you, if you make a circle, you have to think about the fact that you may not know how to put it back on 
because you could fit any which way. <coughs> so if you make a circular shape, you may want to actually cut a tab into it. Cut that little piece like this out so that you know exactly where to put it back. Or you can always just kind of make it fit in with your design and have some kind of line so that you know that your lines are going to line up and your lid goes back on the right way. All right. When you cut your lid, you're going to use this tool here, and this tool here is called the Fettling Knife. F-E-T-T-L-I-N-G. Fettling Knife. This is not a part of your toolkit. We only have five or six of them in the room, so you'll have to share. <coughs> and bless you. They are always in that um, overflow tool bin on the shelf over there. The reason you do not want to use a pin tool is because a pin tool has a thickness to it, and the fettling knife is a little thinner, and it makes the lid fit the form a little bit better when you're done. All right, the other thing is, is when you're cutting your lid, is try to avoid using a sawing motion, because you could damage your lid when you're doing it. You're going to try to put that knife in at a 45 degree angle, like that, not straight down, and then cut around with as smooth of a motion as possible. That is why I probably am going to choose to cut my lid pretty close to the beginning of the project because the, this is harder to do the drier it gets. Now what happens if I forget to do my 45 degree angle and I just cut it straight down? Bless you. Can you hear this person mm -hmm. here missed that little part and they cut their lid straight down and you can see now where their lid is. It's inside the pot because every time you go to put this lid on here, there's nothing to catch in. It just falls straight through. So that's why you don't want to cut straight down. You want to cut at this 45 degree angle so that when you put it back together, it won't fall in. Okay? Okay, so there's my lid and you can clean it up a little bit more than that, but at least I've got my lid on now. All right, next thing I'm going to show you how to do is pull a handle. One of your requirements for this assignment is that you must pull a handle. Now, if tomorrow your design that you pick does not look good with a pulled handle and you don't want to make a pulled handle, um, you do not have to make the pulled handle for your teapot, but you must still demonstrate the skill to me. So let's say you want to do a sculpted um, handle instead. That's fine. You still must pull a handle and show it to me separately at the Greenware check-in so that I know you know how to do it. Okay? So what does a pulled handle look like? This is the handle I pulled in the last class. It's a smoother, more pliable, and plastic handle. And what you're going to do is you're going to create something in the beginning that looks like a carrot. You guys know what a carrot is, right? It's a vegetable. Eat vegetables much? You know? Yeah? Antonio? We'll cut the orange thing, you know? Good for your eyesight and all that stuff. All right. So... With this carrot here, I'm not talking about like one of those little carrot like party favorite like dip things, like the little baby carrot things. Uh, I'm talking like a full on Bugs Bunny chomping, green stuff growing out of the top carrot, right? Now in the end, only this part becomes the handle. This is just for you to hold on while you're doing the pulling. So this is the part that matters the most. Take the time to smooth it out and make it look nice. If you make a carrot that looks like this, your handle is going to look like this. So take the time to smooth it out before you start pulling. It will make your life easier. Um, other thing with pulling a handle is, and this is, this is a little embarrassing, guys, but you can either pull it at the table with a bucket of water or at the sink, but just know that if you poop in the sink or in the bucket when you're pulling the handle, you have to get your poop out of the water, okay? Don't dump it down the sink. So, this is one of those things where when I do it, I'm going to do it in about 15 seconds because I've make and made about a thousand handles, maybe more, in my lifetime. So it's a little quicker for me. But I will tell you guys that this is going to be your challenge with this assignment. And it's more difficult to do than you might think to stretch it out and you're trying to make it kind of thin. Now what am I talking about when I say poop in the sink? If you poop when you're pulling your handle, it's okay everybody poop, don't be embarrassed. If you poop when you're pulling your handle,
handle. The only thing I ask is that you fish it out of the sink and you throw it away and don't leave your poo poo caca in the sink for everybody else to have to clean up, okay? So I'm going to pull this nice and thin and then all I do is I bend it. And then I've got my handle. I just have to let it sit up a little bit. All right, so that being said, my policy is you guys are going to come to me crying, Miss Felix, I can't pull a handle, I can't pull a handle, it's too hard. And I'm going to make you do it at least three times by yourself. Try it at least three times by yourself before I'll help you. Because usually by the third time you can get it, but it won't happen on the first time. Okay, so there's my handle ready to go. I just have to let it set up. And now while it's setting up, I'm going to make the spout. Okay, two ways to make your spout. Number one is soft slab. You can use this cone shape. Um, and it's just like when you made your cups where you're going to roll a slab onto the cone shape to come up with this form here. The other way is to do a pulled spout. And the reason you'd want to do a pulled spout is sometimes you want something a little more curvy, a little more fancy, or something a little more decorative with a bend in it. And you can do it the same way you did the handle. It's just a little bit thicker and a little bit more round. Okay, so I'll show you those two ways now. Let's start with the soft slab. You just need the tiniest amount of clay. And you're going to roll yourself a little slab. Now this time I want you, normally I tell you a slab at about a quarter of an inch is good enough. This time I want you to go thinner, about half the thickness of that. So I want about an eighth of an inch thick with the slab. Moving it over frequently, moving to a dry spot to get myself down to about an eighth of an inch, which isn't too hard when you're working with a small piece of clay like this to get it a little bit thinner. All right, so I'm looking at something, something more like this in terms of thickness for the spout. Okay. Now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut it so it looks kind of like a smiley face. Straight top, curved bottom, smiley face. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to cut off these corners or the shoulders of the smiley face. So you have this shape here. And the reason that you want this shape here is because when you roll this up, it makes a cone shape, which is what you want. You want a spout that's wider at the base and narrower at the top, okay? So I'm going to take my cardboard cone now, and if it does not have paper on it already, you're going to want to put paper on it. This one already has a paper towel up to the tip, so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to put the tip of the cone on the straight line. And then I'm going to wrap up this part here. How about if you don't do that? Well, if if I don't do which part? If you don't uh, wrap With the paper the, towel? No. If you don't wrap it on the cone. And you just build it? You can. If you, if you don't need to have the cardboard cone, it's just more challenging to fold it and make it look good. It just takes a more um, skillful hand. So I think it's easier to use the cardboard cone. So I'm going to take this off here. Take off this excess. This is just like your cups. The only difference is, is that with the cone, you've got this cone shape, and with the cups, you have that black tube. Now when I'm making a soft slab spout, I always just kind of close up the tip and I end up cutting it later. So I'm going to loot this all really, really well, better than I'm doing in my demo. Take it off and let it set to leather hard. So let's fast forward. To the next day when my piece is leather hard and let's talk about how to attach it. Got all these bags up here, I gotta figure out which one actually has my oh that's right. I did um, this one I was gonna do the the pulled one. Let's just fast forward, let's pretend this is leather hard. Um, and I'll show you what we're gonna do, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do with this one. I only made one because this one I was gonna attach my pulled spout. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to want to do is if I put my spout on like this, how much water is that teapot going to hold? Not very much at all. And plus it looks a little silly, right? 
The key with the teapot spout is that the tip of the spout needs to be as high, if not higher, than the lid. So the trick is, is with my first cut, I want to cut it so that when I, ang when I put it on, it angles up. So I'm going to take that fettling knife again, and this one is soft because I just made it last period. But it should be a little bit stiffer than this. And I'm going to cut it at a 45 degree angle. That way when I attach it to the body of the pot, it angles up in this top is as high if not taller than the lid. All right. In order to score and slip and attach this, I would trace around the spout itself, cut a smaller circle, and this, you guys, this is really important. It's actually number six on your sheet. It seems like a small detail, but if you mess this up, you're going to be like, oh, I messed up my whole teapot. Okay? So after I trace it around, you trace a smaller circle inside and you cut out the smaller circle. What happens if I forget to do that and I just cut out the big circle I just traced around? What if I cut out the big circle and then I go to attach this? What's the problem with that? It doesn't, it's not going to attach. It's going to fall in. So it is really, really important that after you trace that size of the spout that you make that smaller circle inside and you cut out the smaller circle. That way you have something left to score and slip and attach to. Okay? All right, but I'm not going to use this spout to attach. I was going to use this one that I made here. Okay, so this spout here, it, I pulled it just like I just showed you guys. The only difference is I made it a little more round instead of flat, and I left it thick. And the reason I left it thick is because you can see there's no hole in it yet. Right? Plus it's ginormous. I have to cut this sucker down. So the first thing I'm going to do is, if this is going to be my spout, is I'm going to visually try to figure out what parts I'm going to use and what parts I don't want to use. So I for sure don't want to use this big, thick Mamba Jamba stuff right here. That was just what I used to hold on to it. But even still, when I put that on there, it's like, whoa, way too big. So I'm going to continue to kind of cut away at it, slowly figuring out like my angles, and how I want it to attach, I think I want it to angle up, like back a little bit more like that. So I'm going to cut this more at an angle. And I'm just playing with it, cutting it down, kind of whittling it down until I get the shape that I want. Now I want a dramatic spout, but this is a little too dramatic for this tiny little form. So I think I'm going to cut it down probably about to this spot right here to get the look I'm going for. Eh. Maybe a little bit more of an angle like this. So let's say that's the kind of spout I want. I'm actually not super happy with it, but it is what it is. So there's my, there's what's going to be my spout, okay? Now what I want to do, I could use this one. Yeah, I use that one. Now what I'm going to do is I have to get the hole through this. So to get the hole through this, I am going to take my fettling knife, hold it on the table, and I am going to eyeball it, but I am going to, as carefully as I can, try to slice it down the middle. Once I have it sliced down the middle, and I open it up, I can use my loop tool, the round one, the round side, and I can carve out the center carefully. And again, I want it to be wider at the base than at the spout. That is the secret to having a good pour with your teapot. You want it to allow the water to flow through the base of it and then be forced into a smaller opening and then it'll, it'll pour more nicely. Okay, so I've cut out, and you can smooth it a little bit better, these pieces, and then I'm going to score and slip the edges and put them back together, and when I do that, then I have the hole through the middle, and I can attach it, and it'll pour. I actually like the one I did first period better, so I'm going to use that, I think. It's still a little bit dramatic for this form.
but I think I'm going to use this one to attach. Okay, so scoop out the middle here, round side, and then to score and slip it, I'm going to score and slip my edges better than this. And I will do the same thing when I attach it. We'll just get it sticky enough that it'll actually stick for this demo. Okay, put those guys together, line them up. Glue it all together nicely. And then I will do the same thing, where this is my new spout for this pot. I will trace where I want it to go, trace a little circle on the inside, and then that ends up being the piece that I'm going to cut out. Now, if you like loose leaf tea, meaning you don't want to put the tea bag in here to steep and you just want to put the loose tea in there. Some people don't cut this whole piece out. They actually make the strainer in the spout and they poke holes, which you can do and that's fine. You just have to make sure that you make a big enough hole that when you glaze it, it doesn't get glazed shut and that the water will still flow through it. So when I do that, I use actually not just the tip of the pin tool, but the barrel of the pin tool that size hole.